you're involved with the, the Future Film Festival, um, and it's kind of targeted to, to aspiring filmmakers, so I wonder what kind of advice you had to those people and what kind of inspiration you could give them. I mean, I, I, there's loads of things you could say, obviously. I think the quickest, fastest thing and most annoying thing you can say is pick up a camera, go make a film. Um, it's the fastest way to learn. You know, you've got to learn by your mistakes. You know, you're going to trip up. It's not going to go perfectly, but the quicker you get, like, either you're going to make a great movie, so go do it now, or you're going to screw up, so get all the mistakes out of the way now as fast as you can. So just, I'd say just, like now, when I, when I was at film school, uh, if you wanted to make a film, you had to shoot on film, so it would... It'd be something you'd have to save for for like a year. It cost thousands. Mm. You know, you couldn't make, you couldn't have the equipment until you worked all summer doing a job to raise the money. But now shooting digitally, it looks beautiful, and it's free. So there's no excuses. Pick up a camera, mm. go do something. What kind of films are you making as well when you're kind of like 15 and that age? Mainly rubbish ones. <laughs> <laughs> really rubbish ones. And then, um, yeah, it's stuff. When I was 15. It was with my dad's camcorder, and it'd be my friends, and it'd be, I'd go see a film, and then I'd get really inspired by that film. So when I was that age, it was things like Total Recall, yeah. Terminator 2, things like that. So then I'd go and want to make that film. So I'd, I'd buy the soundtrack, and I'd make a short film, and we'd buy some guns, and put some makeup on, and we'd like do some scene, like some chase scene or something that was similar to some part of that film, and and uh, I'd kind of do that sort of thing. And it's not changed, really. You can see monsters. <laughs> it's just copying all these other movies. Yeah. I understand as well you met um, a while ago. Quentin Tarantino came to the UK and showed Reservoir Dogs, and you actually met him there. So he was kind of must have one of your early inspirations. Yeah, that was just when Reservoir Dogs had come out, and he was just working on Pulp Fiction, I think. It was up in Nottingham. And, yeah, I mean, but he was not Quentin Tarantino then. Mm -hmm. And so he was just stood around at the film festival, like... I couldn't believe it. No one was talking to me. I had a pint and a, and a little comic uh, bag. And uh, we were like, oh, excuse me. And I was like doing that whole, I saw your film seven times. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and, and he was really nice and just really, um, uh, like really generous. And, just, and, and he did a Q&A. Yeah, they showed Reservoir Dogs there and they did a Q&A and everything. Mm. Uh, this weekend as well, um, you've got the BAFTAs as well. So you kind of, have you got your speech ready for Monsters just in case or...? Are you kind of leaving that out? No, I'm not going to win it. <laughs> it's, it's an honour to be nominated and all that sort of stuff yeah. that people say, but no, I'm not expecting. I mean, there's some great competition. Yeah. Banksy is competition. Yeah. Do you reckon he'll turn up? Do you think he turns <laughs> up and pretends he's someone else? That's what I'm wondering. He might wondering. Do. Yeah. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'm secretly hoping, the only reason you'd want to win is because I'm secretly hoping out of, out of vengeance he would graffiti your house. <laughs> and then like, it's going to be worth like two million yeah. <laughs> overnight, <laughs> maybe. Mm. Are, you, are you surprised as well with the kind of the journey Monsters doesn't taking you on? Because I guess it's, it's kind yeah, of yeah, flying, yeah. really, hasn't it? No, absolutely. I don't think we could have. No, you couldn't. Like you dream in a fantasy of the way things have gone. Um, but yeah, if you sat there with a little list and just been really annoying about it and gone, okay, write down. And we used to do this. You know, we used to do like you're bored. It was a long trip when we were filming, and in the edit, we were in there for like eight months. So we'd. Constantly just sit there sometimes going, okay, what if you had to choose between the film is a flop, but you get the opportunity to do this? And there was all these little like hypothetical things. And uh, a lot of those hypothetical things have happened. And it's like, whoa, okay, that's, this is weird. And uh, yeah, I, I think couldn't possibly have gone into it you know, expecting any of this stuff. We were just sort of hoping that if, if it just got on DVD and went in the cinema to one... We got it in one screening somewhere, so we made a movie, and we could have that little badge that says, I made a movie, yeah. then we would have felt like it was worth it. Mm. And a lot of it was kind of a one-man band. You did all the effects yourself, so I'm kind of wondering how knackered is your computer at this point from just booting out all that rendering and stuff. Is your, okay, you want the honest truth? Yeah. My computer is upside down right now <laughs> because the fan on it died, yeah. and it, it, or it, when it turns on, it goes really loud, but I couldn't not turn it on, and so... I found that if I turned it upside down, like it's a proper computer, if I turn it upside down, there's something about the fan hanging, it doesn't make that noise. Mm. So it's been upside down the whole time. I think it, like, it's, it's dying, basically. But, um, but I didn't. It's like, it, it, it's like that little dog that rescued you. Kind of, yeah. You can't put it down, can you? you know? 